Hello everyone. Um, today I wanted to go into uh, rendering, finally, because Artifolution is a very great program to uh, do renderings with. Uh, this will be a, sort of an um, introduction, uh, introduction to rendering, um, because there's a lot of uh, things that uh, uh, are related to, to this, for example texturing, with, uh, in which I will also go into uh, probably in this tutorial as well. Just uh, the, the basics, of course. Uh, but first, I wanted to uh, show you some things um, that you can do with rendering in Artifolution. Uh, these pictures are um, all made by me in Artifolution uh, that I made uh, in the past. And now I'm just going to show you uh, some of them so you can get an idea of what you can accomplish with uh, rendering in Artifolution. As you can see here um, in this candle, the lighting um, gets diffused uh, through the mat material. I'm going to get uh, into that as well later in some later tutorials because that's uh, some advanced uh, stuff. There's a little boat I made with uh, some uh, waves added and some rain uh, effects added later in Photoshop. It makes a more dramatic effect which I thought was fun. And here's, uh, here's also uh, a render that I was uh, really pleased about. This is actually just a, a tube uh, that was just coiled up. And um, the procedural uh, texture editor in Artifolution, um, it, it makes it so that, um, that it looks like a piece of um, like a juicy turd, <laughs> but it's it it is in reality actually just a plain uh, tube. But um, textures can make it look like it's um, something else. It uh, really gives it uh, you know texture. So, uh, but this is also uh, a bit advanced stuff. But I I will go into that in uh, some later tutorials. Uh, for now, I just uh, want to go through the basics in uh, Art Evolution. So I'm just going to start up Artifolution. Ah, I, I already have started it up. I am um, going to make some uh, simple primitive objects. I'm first going to um, make a little plateau, if you will. I'm uh, holding control down by the way that lets me scale in uh, both directions. Alright, let's zoom in a little bit. Alright, we have our little plateau. Let's create another cube. It's really slow. Alright, and let's cre uh, create a sphere. Just like that. For some reason, uh, our evolution is really slow today, but uh, oh well. Um, what do, you, do I want to do? Um, let's make. Uh, no, that, uh, this, this should be enough for an uh, introductory tutorial. Um, Alright, so what you do when you are rendering, you first have to create a light source. And I'm going to go into uh, different kinds of light sources later. And the way I like to do this uh, when I'm just creating a single light source, well, let's, let, let's just uh, click on uh, the scene to create a light source here. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to make a directional light that uh, gives a little bit better result in my opinion and I'm just zooming out in the top view and I'm clicking and I'm dragging and you can see I, ca I have a line and this shows you the direction the, the directional light will have and if, as you can see directional light is now placed here and it points towards the scene but it also it, sta it stayed on, a, on the x-axis and 
it will pr project the light on the x axis. So I, I'm just going to drag it up a little bit and rotate. Um, actually, uh, it is not really um, important to drag it up because the directional light will not come from this source or anything. It's just all parallel lines of light, if you will. So now we have uh, everything we need to make a render, although it will it will not look very pretty um, like this, but uh, as I said, it's just an introductory tutorial. So what you go what you do is you go to scene and you click on render scene. And there are a lot of options here, like for instance you can just illumination, output, advanced and stuff. All these options that I'm not going to go into right now, but I will in the future. So let's click OK and it starts rendering. So as you can see, our evolution uh, took this um, light information and it calculated the shadow here and it calculated how it would look. Um, oh yeah. So this is of course not a very beautiful picture, but uh, oh well. And I now want to quickly introduce you to uh, textures. For instance, I what if I wanted to make this uh, cube red? Uh, what you can do is uh, you can go to Scene and Textures. This is the texture library. And for now I'm just going to go into uniform texture because that's the simplest. There are a lot of, um, of options here for uh, some um, more complex textures. Alright, so let's name this one red. Um, well, the diffuse color is uh, the color that uh, we are mainly interested in right now. Because you can, uh, of course, you can create all kinds of colors he uh, here. I'm just going for totally red. These other colors, I'm not going to go into it very deeply, but um, as the name implies, this is the specular, specular color, which um, gives an extra color to light that is re reflected from an object and transparent color is the light that um, gets an uh, extra color when it, when it goes through an object like for instance if you have a slightly transparent object this will create an extra color for it. an emissive color is um, a color that uh, that uh, generates light. For instance, if you have a, a light bulb or something and you want that to emit light, you can do this here. For instance, if I crank up the value here, as you can see it becomes a bit lighter and that, um, it's, it's like um, the texture itself is uh, emitting light. But oh, oh well. And these sliders over here they are pretty st straightforward. This makes the object more transparent. This makes it specular, which is very cool. It uh, now reflects objects from the environment. I'm going to set it to zero here. Shininess is... Um, well, it uh, kind of gives it a little bit of plastic or rubber look, uh, I think. Because it it will just uh, create a blob where the light source is shining on it, so it doesn't reflect anything; just gives it a blob. Roughness, roughness. Um, well, it's uh, it's how rough the surface appears, and it is mainly um, you can mainly see it uh, when shininess is turned on, and when you have a more rough surface, the Blob will get bigger because uh, light that comes in uh, gets scattered more easily. So I'm just going to leave it on default. 
uh, cloudiness, I have no idea what that is. Okay. Now, to apply this texture to the object, uh, you, you first, of course, have to select the object. Then you go to Set Texture and Material in the object menu. And it's pretty straightforward, you can select the texture you want and click OK. Now, for the texture of the sp uh, sphere, I thought uh, it would be nice to have a metallic texture. Um, let's create a new uniform texture. And call it... Uh, well, let's, let's make a golden, a golden sphere. So, I'm going to name it gold. And of course, gold has a bit um, a yellowish, orangish like color. And of course, it's very specular. But you don't want to fully set specular on, uh, specularity on because it will only reflect, uh, it, it will reflect everything in the environment and it won't have. Um, its own color, so, so to speak. So this is um, this is something that you don't see in real life that often, uh, except if you have a uh, metallic object that you have polished very very well and stuff. But usually you can. It's not 100% specular. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And now I can also show you the what specular color does because you for this to work you have to have specularity on. Um, I wanted to have a little bit darker yellow, yellowish, orangish color, and if not that much saturation, like this, and make it a little bit darker, not that dark. Hmm, I'm not sure how this will play out. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, shininess, let's a little bit more shininess. That's okay. Let's turn the roughness off. I think this uh, would look good. Yeah, maybe a little bit more specularity still. Alright. Let's apply it to our sphere. Object, set texture and material. And gold. Alright. So let's render the scene again and as you can see it's still very ugly but as you can see the cube is now red and the ball has kind of like a metallic golden look to it although of course it is uh, re reflecting a, a black uh, surrounding so it doesn't look very interesting here and down here it's only reflecting the um, white, um, how do you say it, the surface here. But as you can see, it also reflects the, uh, the cube here nicely. So, one thing I want to go into is some settings in the render scene setting, uh, I mean, the option. Of course, the width and height, that's pretty straightforward. You can uh, you can set this uh, higher if you want. What is it? Uh, wait a minute. Sorry, I meant to say 600. 800, this will create a bigger image. Now, uh, as you'll notice when I render this, it still it uh, has a, a very uh, hard uh, feel to it. It has very hard edges here. And it, in, my, in my opinion, is that, that that doesn't look very nice. So, what you usually want to do when rendering is turn anti-aliasing aliasing on, and you can set it to maximum, medium, whatever you want, and then you uh, you'll have a little bit more control over um, how well uh, this is done. For instance. Uh, well, let, let, let's just look at a maximum at, um, at the aliasing at the uh, default erase per pixel. So let's render it. 
and as you can see it uh, right now it's done and as you can see now the edges are way more smooth and uh, the overall picture looks just a lot nicer and the higher you set the maximum rays per pixel the better the quality will become actually the minimum rays per pixel is not that important to um, set so uh, or so I have been told but I'm going to do it anyway um, it's still rendering it still has hard edges and you can't really see it right, right now but it's rendering first 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 it does a kind of like a global uh, rendering so that you can see what's in there and then it starts uh, from the top and goes row by row it builds up the image so as you can see now the it does it didn't really matter that much um, I mean the, the higher rays per pixel setting so usually I just go with the default because it will look just fine and one thing you may want to do when when you have one just one uh, or multiple for that matter uh, light sources you can turn on soft shadows which makes it look a little bit better but generally I don't really uh, like to use um, directional lights for renderings and I'm going to explain to you that in another tutorial about light sources or whatever I want I'm going to call it so yeah um, this is basically all I wanted to show you guys for this um, introductory um, tutorial about rendering in Art Evolution so I hope you guys uh, found it helpful and uh, I'll see you all in the next tutorial.